We're here at the International Conference in Cape Town, uh, 2009, with uh, Francois Barry Sanus, who has uh, been involved with the discovery of the virus, my goodness, uh, way back, and um, evolved many uh, important research pieces that have been uh, come forward over time, and uh, you presented at the opening of the conference. So give us a little bit of the background and, and your feeling of now looking back on those days and, and moving forward, you know, a very brief quick picture. Uh, uh, very briefly, I think uh, if I look back, it has been an enormous progress mm -hmm. uh, since the discovery of the virus in 1983. Uh, and the main progress has been in diagnosis and, uh, and treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, today we have a treatment that uh, has been shown to be very efficient, uh, decreasing the mortality, morbidity in, in, in the patient. And we even know today that this treatment can prevent uh, and reduce the transmission of mm -hmm. HIV. Mm -hmm. So it's, this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. However, however, <laughs> there is some key issues for which uh, we don't have uh, yet any answer. Uh, we don't have a vaccine mm -hmm. yet, mm -hmm. and we don't have a cure for it. Mm -hmm. So uh, now I feel that uh, we really have to define the priority of the future. And for me, the priority of the future is in these two areas. But even, even within that area, we have mm -hmm. to define more precisely what we want to do. We have to, not maybe to, to be more creative, to have some more originality. Because for years, it, it has been, as you know, a lot of money for HIV AIDS research. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, a lot of work has been done, even in the vaccine field. If I'm mm -hmm. taking as an example the vaccine field, I, I really feel that a lot of things has been done that we could have avoided. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, it has been a lot of work on HIV diversity and the impact of uh, the diversity to develop a specific HIV candidates. Mm -hmm. uh, that are, for example, circulating in South Africa uh, or, or, or in other countries. Is it the priority today? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm wondering yeah. myself. Yeah. And I, my answer, personal answer, is no. Yeah. Uh, my personal answer is no, at least today, because if one day we know what kind of mechanics we have to induce to protect someone, mm -hmm. if we are able to to do it for one strain, let's say, of HIV-1, mm -hmm. we will be able to do it for the others. Mm -hmm. right. So for me, the first priority is to understand how to protect someone. Mm -hmm. uh, so, of course, it has been a lot of trial uh, done. I'm not so convinced that all of them were really necessary to be done. Mm -hmm. But I'm not saying either that we should stop to make any vaccine trial. Mm -hmm. I think we just have to have the right balance, let's say, mm -hmm. between what uh, I call more or less empiric science. And up to now, we uh, took that uh, approach of em empirism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now we have also to think about more rational mm -hmm. science. And we should really have a balance between both. Mm -hmm. And even some the empiric science should be based on some rational, at least. Mm -hmm. We had the vaccine failures, and that kind of, with the hope we had in that, we were headed in that direction. We said, my goodness, if we can get a vaccine that works, that would have made a big difference in the way we would look at things. So since we have that failure and the setback to the point where we think there's not going to be any hope for that, at least in the immediate future, or even in the reasonable close future, then we think more about treatment as prevention. That, that rises right. to the top. And I think that's a good, good point for me mm -hmm. because um, we know and we have more and more data that are even presented at that conference that uh, um, antiretroviral treatment can reduce mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the dissemination of, uh, mm -hmm. of the virus. Uh, so that means that give us some time. Mm 
So it's the reason why we, are, as scientists, are pushing so much for the access to treatment because mm -hmm. not only it's a wonderful benefit for, for the patient, for the epidemic and so on, but it left us some time mm -hmm. uh, to make progress in, in science and we know it, mm -hmm. the, the, the way is long. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to know that we have some measures mm -hmm. that can be used to reduce the epidemic already. Right now. Right really now, do, yeah. today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you're in basic science, and you know uh, you're connected with a lot that are also in basic science. And I've talked to Amalio Talenti, who's working in genomics, and um, th there seems to be a sense that maybe vaccines will look differently than we had hoped, or, or what would maybe take the place of a vaccine, something that would be able to be given to a patient even once a month, maybe therapeutically. Uh, or vaccination-wise, but, but it would be something that would be, um, you know, maybe through genomics or some other vector. I mean, we, we don't know what it is. There's a lot of possibilities out there. And, and um, is, that, is that your hope, too, or is that your, do you see things in the, in the science, in the basic science field that could maybe go in that, head in that direction? First of all, when we are speaking about the vaccine, Usually for me, at least as an old scientist, vaccine is, should be a, a prophylactic vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, the name of vaccine used for therapeutic, yeah. uh, it's something curious for me. Anyway, mm -hmm. people are using it today for both. Right. Uh, I prefer to say therapeutic immunization. Okay, all right. <laughs> Myself. Right. Uh, of course, therapeutic immunization, it's a way to go. Uh, to try to um, have a, a better approach to uh, treat patients mm -hmm. uh, and to uh, reduce uh, the treatment in, in the patients. I will say that, uh, of course, I'm more optimistic in, 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 let's say, therapeutic vaccine than in, in prophylactic vaccine, like uh, mm -hmm. all the scientists. Mm -hmm. Why? because we have those people that are uh, carrying the virus for years mm -hmm. and uh, do not develop uh, the elite controllers. The elite controllers. The elite controllers. Yeah. And uh, so we just have to understand the mechanism of protection mm -hmm. uh, that uh, they develop. And we have more and more data these days. It, mm -hmm. According uh, to genomics, is giving mm -hmm. us uh, some information regarding the, the, the role of uh, uh, HLA, for example, uh, mm -hmm. which uh, seems to be uh, important with high frequency of uh, some HLA in mm -hmm. those uh, 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 con elite controllers. I'm sure we, we will learn even more uh, about uh, innate immunity and, mm -hmm. and the role of innate immunity. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in Jay, Jay Levy has been working on that for years. For years yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And she has been very interested in interferon producing cells mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and so on. And I'm sure that the genomic can help mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to identify uh, which uh, component of innate immunity might be important uh, mm -hmm. for inducing protective mm -hmm. uh, immunity. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, uh, I'm sure it's, uh, it's, first of all, I consider myself that, uh, a priority. <laughs> And I'm sure that uh, it's a field that uh, will explode mm -hmm. uh, in the coming the, in the coming we, year. We 